Hello Megalithomaniacs, how are you all doing? So today we're here at the 2022 dig at the Ness of Brodgar in Orkney. Now this is one of the most important sites, uh, one of the most important archaeological excavations of this century really. And um, it's been going on for over a decade now, I think 15 or 16 years. And Nick Card, who's the head archaeologist, is the guy who's been kind of organizing and, and working with this. They found some remarkable things here. Evidence of occupation going back to at least 3,500 BC, possibly older, because the new one of the new trenches, um, which we'll have a look at, actually suggests this. And this is actually just inside what they found, this huge outer wall, which would have like protected the whole area so whether this was some kind of university or some kind of enclosure or living quarters is still up for debate but to me it's very very special and it's not just like where people would live or be buried there's something else going on here it's almost like a, a school of teaching that they were teaching all the measurements and the geometry and the landscape engineering that we know they were masters of here and they actually developed here because some of the earliest stone circles are from here i mean the stones of stenness is the earliest officially the earliest stone circle in britain at 3100 bc although that is up for debate and uh, the ring of Brodgar supposedly 2500 bc but again there's they found evidence of earlier dating actually within the site itself and so as they keep digging they keep finding new things even the, the mega lithic stone spheres the geometric stone spheres they found one here and they found many more in Orkney, like a scar of bray which is just a few hundred years younger than this so yeah we're going to have a look around look at the new digs look at the new excavations and um you know see what we can see structure five discovered in 2005 and you can see the shape what they've kind of created They're like a massive part of the outer wall and a structure kind of next to it so here we have structure five. Now this is interesting because this is, although it's bigger, it's about 15 meters or 45 feet long. It's very similar in style and shape and construction to the um, Nap of Hawa on Papa Westray. And it's only 200 years later. It's like 3,500 BC, they think. And so it would have been divided by different orthostats. It would have had entrances and sort of sections and rooms within it, probably with a roof over it as well. And so this could be one of the earliest phases of the whole site and you can actually see what appears to be bedrock there so they were kind of carving and creating into the bedrock placing carving and placing stones in like we see at the stones of Stennis. We're here with Nick Card, the archaeologist of uh, the Ness of Brodgar. You've been doing, how long have you been doing this now? This oh started here really in 2004 very small scale uh, larger scale since about 2008. So can, can you tell me what's, what is, is there anything specific that's been found here this year, like 2022? Oh, where do you begin? It's the same every year. We're just inundated with, you know, just a, a whole range of new discoveries. Uh, maybe some of the walls in Trench T with Structure 27 are just uh, jaw-droppingly beautifully constructed. Um, some of the polished stone axes once again. Um, some more Neolithic art, uh, just kind of uh, clarifying the relationship between some of the buildings and the, the kind of sequence of events within them. So yeah, it's a gradual just unpicking the story. So this is structure number one, phase one of, of it. And this dates back to, they say, to at least 3200 BC. And you can see the shape of it there. It's kind of reminiscent of um, the Nap of Hawa. On, uh, Ness, on Papa Westray and, and they found this infant burial here in 2015 uh, lying on its side and phase two developed into this um, a few hundred years later and this is actually when it was first brought out brought to light in 2003 so you can see how this whole site has developed kind of since then and this is what we're looking at now. So apparently it's got quite a history. I mean, it was uh, remodeled three times, uh, 45 feet long. It had double cruciform interior with entrances at both ends and a stone tiled roof. So they were talking about a gigantic structure here. And you can see some of the images, um, recreations of it. It was like a kind of 
was it a temple was it like almost like a church or was it a kind of meeting building or some kind of university of the ancient people later on the interior was shortened with a large curved wall also mentions the kind of some of the art that's been found here as well this is interesting with kind of cut marks like a cruciform shape on it the 70 have been found 70 carvings have been found here um, in this part of the site This stone here was found. Um, it's a little bit larger than in real life. You can hold it in your hand. I have a, a copy of it. It's very interesting. There's no other stones like this. It's one of the stone balls, spherical balls. This has been carved. On one side it has three. On the other side it has four. So it's a cuboctor tetrahedron. I think that's the right term for it. So it's basically um, two sides, three sides square with a triangle on each end. And you can hold it in particular ways. If you hold the two, then four are uppermost. If you hold the four, two are uppermost. It's, it's about numbers. It could be about numbers, the symbolism of numbers. So the stone ball was actually found here in structure 10. We have this concentric circle, cup and kind of ring mark. And this stone here, which is a multi-cut mark stone. I must remember that the, when this was closed up, that's kind of what it would have looked like. When it was closed up, you had this giant surrounding of animal bone placed all the way around the edge and in the part in the central part as well, but all the way around the edge as though it was marking the final sacred area, the closure of the site. That's fascinating. I mean, and are you finding deeper levels here like that than you found previously? So potentially pushing the dates back or anything like that? Well, we kind of have uh, the kind of brackets for the occupation of the Ness throughout the Neolithic from about 3500 BC right the way through to about 2400, 2300. Plus there's elements of Mesolithic activity here, for instance, with regards to uh, just a series of Mesolithic style flints. And we have had some anomalous uh, radiocarbon dates that push the site back into the Mesolithic period as well. But um, yes, it's kind of filling in the gaps between the earliest Neolithic and the later Neolithic. We're still doing that because obviously when you're dealing with a site like this, which is kind of multi-phase, and here we're just looking at the top of this huge archaeological iceberg, Although we have early structures over there in Trench J, later structures here, but it's what's happening in between them. So, yeah, lots of fun picking to do. So, but the most interesting part of Nessa Brodgar for me is this stretch down here, because this was a paved walkway all the way around here, which was covered, and it would have been immaculate at the time. It would have been very white stone. And it makes me think of something like ancient Greece. You can imagine them walking around here but this is a phenomenal place. You can see the internal structure of this building here with these walls. And this is the first building you see when you come to this, this site. You can see the curved outer wall here and you can see the inner night, complete start 90 degree corners over there. A lot of these um, internal stones were painted red, black and white were the predominant colours. Some of the stones were painted and carved and then they were turned around so the painted area was inside the wall. So here are just a few new discoveries that they found here in 2022. This is interesting, this is like a worked piece, definitely being dressed, they were just telling us. And also we've got one here which almost looks like it's got a cut mark on top of it as well and another sort of monolith here, a small monolith, as well as a few other work pieces, you know, these flag, flagstone types that we find in this kind of area. It looks to me like this stone here, this is positive and negative, so the, the triangles here were positive, they would be sticking out of the surface. So this has all been pecked, revealing, leaving these two triangles for some purpose. 
So, and that is a lot of work, removing all of this surface and leaving that. It's very hard to tell, but that's what it looks like to me. Apparently there was colours used on these stones. There was a form of red, there was a white, which is a ground up burnt bone, and there was a black. Um, now there's red here. I'm wondering this, if this is the red that he was referring to. There could be some white, but that could just be the photo. Obviously they're going by the evidence of remains of the paint. So perhaps this is some of the remains of paint. Uh, some of the stones, particularly in structure 27, have uh, for all intents and purposes the appearance of repurposed standing stones. But uh, until we actually fully uncover them uh, and look at the size of them, because although you can see the top, the other half is still buried, but we'd think that you are dealing with stones not only four and a half, up to four and a half metres long, but maybe well over half a metre in depth. Stroke to 27 was actually very interesting. That's the one with all the orthostats, like the kind of thin megaliths on their side, on the thin edge, kind of creating walls, if you like. So, yeah, it's kind of unique, and it's one of the oldest as well. I suppose the highlight for me, though, was seeing the, the external wall revealed in structure 27. You know, we had other elements of it, but it had been very heavily robbed out. But on one side of the building, we're looking at a wall that still survives to probably about half a metre in height. But it's the most exquisite Neolithic stonework probably anywhere. It's on a par with Mays Howe, if not better. So this whole area is kind of the later phase. And what we're looking at here isn't the bedrock. This is actually like a floor kind of built in on top of other structures. The one just over here is one of the longer ones in the middle over there. And going up that way, it's been partly covered up. So this is structure 10. This is actually technically the largest building on the site, 20 by 19 meters. So we're talking about 60 feet width, almost square, just a bit off. And this would have been absolutely huge in total. And as the entrance, it kind of comes out just where Nick is there. And the outer walls are right over there, so, and down here. So this is huge. So this would have been a prominent building. It's also where they had the kind of final feast, you know, where they closed down the site. They had a huge feast, left all the bones and evidence of that, and then covered it over. And it would have had giant standing stones at his entrance, right near where we are now, just down here, just, just to the right of where that lady's standing. So we're talking about these were big structures here and we're looking at two of the main areas structure 10 here and structure the one over there we looked at earlier what it, one thing it isn't for most of its life is just a purely domestic it's site yeah. You, you're finding elements which wouldn't go amiss in kind of uh, settlement sites. But again, when you add together all the se separate bits of evidence here, for instance, the scale, the wonderful nature of the, of the archaeology, um, all the finds, the amount of Neolithic art, when you take all that together, I don't think you're looking at just purely a domestic site. I, I think the closest you can get to the British Neolithic culture in in their kind of spiritual outlook was that of the North American natives in the way that they considered nature to be sacred. Now this is a big division between the modern archaeologists, the modern scientists and the ancient worldview. So we're just leaving the Ness of Brodgar in the summer of 2022. The dig closes in a few days, we're here in August. And we spoke to Nick Card, the head archaeologist. We've had a look around at the general site but also some of the new excavations and they're finding mesolithic activity here now this is what is pretty amazing so this proves how old this area is and how long it's been inhabited and used by the people here and so were they actually constructing were they actually laying out stones were they actually like you know, placing them in the ground this far back but thanks for watching i hope you enjoyed our quick visit here with nicholas cope myself and the interview with nick card so we'll see you next time megalithomaniacs <laughs>